We're rolling. Stop. Speed. C97, take one. Mark. Action. When I was a young boy, a piano dropped on my leg. My leg! And I had to abandon my dream of becoming a world famous football player. In this situation, I did what any rational human being would do, and signed up for animation college. Here, I had a wonderful teacher who always told me, finished is better than perfect. I now realize how important that advice was, but at the time, I didn't want to hear it. I always thought, well, what's the point in finishing anything that's not perfect? I could really have benefited from watching the film Ed Wood back then. Released in 1994, Ed Wood was directed by Tim Burton and is centered on the film director Ed Wood, whose filmography includes Glen or Glenda, Bride of a Monster, and his magnum opus Plan 9 from Outer Space. Considered by many to be the worst director of all time, he's basically the 20th century Tommy Wiseau. Oh, hi, Mark. The film follows Ed Wood in the period of his life when he made these masterpieces. Edward is portrayed in this film by Johnny Depp, who I believe gives one of the best performances of his career. He's a terrific actor, but I think he's at his best when he's slightly more subdued. Now, I like Jack Sparrow as much as anyone else born in the 90s, but in the last, well, 20 years, he's mostly just played these eccentric, cartoon-like characters, especially in Tim Burton movies. Personally, I just find these performances... Too much, darling, too much! Don't get me wrong, he's still a bit of a cartoon character in this film, but I think it's necessary to fit the character's slightly naive, hopelessly optimistic worldview. Edward is not a perfectionist. In fact, he's kind of the opposite. At one point saying, Filmmaking is not about the tiny details, it's about the big picture. A statement that if heard by Stanley Kubrick might have made his head explode. To him, every take is perfect, and a bit of cardboard looks just like a real tombstone. He's the sort of guy who, when buying a puppy, would definitely pick the runt of the litter thinking it was going to win Crufts. However, he's driven by a bewildering self-confidence, an incredible passion for filmmaking, and a completely undeterred optimism that make him an incredibly engaging and inspiring character to watch. Most people he encounters are pretty much entirely dismissive of him, apart from a very small film crew. Equally as outcast by Hollywood, and labelled as misfits and dope addicts by Ed's girlfriend Dolores Fuller, they believe in his vision, and are just as committed to getting these projects made. Going as far as to take part in a group baptism, all to raise finances for an upcoming feature. How do you do it? How do you get all your friends to get baptised? Just so you can make a monster movie. It's not a monster movie, it's a supernatural thriller. The most notable member of the group is actor Bella Lugosi, best remembered for playing Count Dracula in the 1931 film of the same name. Lugosi has been long forgotten by Hollywood at this point, now no one gives two fucks for the very well. and meets Ed while shopping for his own coffin. The two men are drawn together by their deep respect for cinema, and each other, quickly forming a friendship. The film is a love story between Edward and cinema, but it's perhaps more so a love story between Wood and Lugosi. Eddie, I want to thank you. These last few days have been a good time. Oh my goodness, it's no surprise Landau won the Oscar for his performance in this movie. I legit thought the character was played by Lugosi himself for a while. He'd have only needed to live to be 111. Yeah, I'm as amazed as you are I even got into animation college. But yeah, it's an absolutely bang on portrayal, with such a huge amount of raw emotion behind it. As soon as the character comes on screen, you instantly believe you're looking at someone who's lived and breathed cinema. For better or worse. Tonally, this film is really funny, but I never for a moment felt like it was making fun of any of its subjects. In fact, the opposite is true. Tim Burton has a huge respect for not just Wood, but all these characters. Simply put, as a director, he's at his best when he's given full creative freedom to make small films about people he loves and relates to, in exactly the way he loves to make them. Looking at his filmography, it is so obvious to me which ones his heart was in, and which ones it just wasn't. Quick side note, when I was watching Landau's performance in this film, I kept thinking of the teacher character from Frankenweenie, a film that is similar in its gorgeous black and white look, and in its stripped back, passion project feel. 
Well, it turns out Martin Landau voiced this character, which makes perfect sense. This man is in the way! Ah! Minor spoiler alert for a scene that happens towards the end of the film. It's only two minutes, but is so emblematic of the spirit of the entire film, to the point it manages to be one of my favourite film scenes, that I just have to talk about it. Ed Wood deeply admires Orson Welles. These directors were making movies in the same time period, and Ed sees his own career as mirroring Welles's. But in one scene, they actually do meet, and well, their lives kinda do mirror. Vincent D'Onofrio is absolutely perfect as Wells in this scene, from the look, the mannerisms, to the voice. Orson Wells, you see, has quite a particular way of talking. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, that, that's a garbage impression, but he absolutely nails it. I'm supposed to do a thriller at Universal, but they want Charlton Heston to play a Mexican. This definitely fits into the category of best film performance lasting three minutes or less. Correction! Um, I only found out while editing that voice actor Maurice LaMarche actually provided Orson Welles' voice in this scene. Oopsie! His role is uncredited. However, Vincent, I think it's only fair we split your award in two. Ah, there we go. Now, let us resume. Faced with the same filmmaking problems, they bond over their determination of having full creative control over their projects. It ends with Wells imparting this advice. Ed. Yes? Visions are worth fighting for. Why spend your life making someone else's dreams? And this is what the film is really about, and why I found it so inspiring. This scene didn't happen in real life and these filmmakers never met. In fact, the film, as stated by Burton, is not a hardcore realistic biopic. Instead, he opted to get inside Wood's spirit and make the film through Wood's eyes. However, this scene, and essentially the whole film, conveys a message that is so important and honest that I do not think it matters in the slightest that it's fictitious. Make what you want to make, however you want to make it. Dressed however you want to dress. You might have plenty of detractors, but if you're committed and treat those around you with respect, there will always be those who love your work and push for your success. Anyway, let's return now to my animation classroom. I, and I imagine quite a lot of people who like creating stuff, really struggle with finishing anything. And the reason for this, I think, in large part comes down to a fear of failure. Putting your work out there to be judged is daunting, and no one wants to have it rejected. But Ed Wood is a beautiful example of someone who does put their work out there, and it is overwhelmingly rejected. The work he makes is incredibly poorly received, and ripped apart by the people he wanted so desperately to impress. Yet, he keeps going, and he keeps finishing his projects. He loved his work, and had people around him who loved his work. And to this day, the man has a dedicated fan base. His films, such as Plan 9 from Outer Space, have a cult following, and he's even had a film made about him. In the end, maybe Ed was right. Maybe it is all about the big picture. That's a wrap.